So this video is going to look at formal charge and resonance structures. Formal charge is just the difference between the number of valence electrons that are present for a given element and the lone electrons that are assigned to that element minus half of the bonding electrons. So with this oxygen atom, and this applies for all three oxygen atoms in this molecule, we see that oxygen starts with six valence electrons. Each of the oxygens has six electrons that are assigned to it in terms of lone electrons, three lone electron pairs, and it has one bond connecting oxygen to the chlorine atom, so that would consist of two electrons. With chlorine, we have seven valence electrons, only two are lone electrons, while three pairs are involved in bonds, so that's a total of six electrons, and that gives us a formal charge of plus two. When we add each of the oxygen's formal charges, that gives us minus three, and we add that to the plus two of chlorine, we get a difference of minus one, and that happens to be the charge of this ion. And that will work for all of our molecules and ions. And the whole goal is to get formal charges as close to zero as possible. Where this can be beneficial is when you are looking at structures that are formed between different amounts of bonds um, for the same molecule and you're trying to determine which is the most stable structure for that molecule. Here we see that on the left carbon is bonded um, via a triple bond to oxygen as well as a single bond and that gives us formal charges that are not zero whereas on the right we have two double bonds and because of that even distribution with the electron pairs we see that the formal charges for all three atoms are zero. And you can go through and take a look at this. Remember that oxygen has six valence electrons, carbon has four, and that you only count half of the electrons for the bonds, but all of the electrons for the lone pairs. And we will see that, um, that this one is a more stable structure because it minimizes um, the positive and negative charges on each of the individual atoms. Resonance takes a look at the same structure like what we just saw, um, but that it can kind of go um, back and forth between two particular atoms. Um, and that happens when the bond can move between them and the formal charges really aren't going to change significantly like we saw in the previous one where we went from positives and negatives to flat out zeros. Um, there's no particular reason for the bond to be between one set of atoms versus the other. And so what actually happens is the bond acts like a metronome and it rotates between the different atoms that it can share the electrons with. Um, so for example, in ozone down here, this double bond is going back and forth between the oxygen atoms on the right and the oxygen atom on the left. And so it's basically about one and a half bonds that are being shared between each of the oxygen atoms and the central oxygen. Um, this occurs, and we can also see this with benzene below, because the electrons are delocalized, they are not affixed to one side of the carbon bond versus the other, and because they're evenly distributed, um, there's no particular pull in one direction versus another. Um, this typically makes these molecules, um, at least this bond here with benzene, um, it gives it additional stability and it allows it to form reactions with other compounds a little differently than it would with other types of hydrocarbons that we're going to encounter in our next chapter. So here we're going to take a look at the formal charge versus carbon monoxide. We don't really have a central atom in this molecule, so we're going to take a look at both carbon and oxygen. We see with carbon that it has four valence electrons. Only two of those are assigned to carbon as lone electrons, and it has three bonds between it and oxygen, so six electrons are being shared. And so the difference between um, the valence electrons and our lone and bonding electrons is a minus one. Oxygen, in theory, should be a plus one, so that it will cancel out the minus one for oxygen. Excuse me, the minus one for carbon. We see that oxygen has six valence electrons, two are lone electrons assigned to oxygen. Again, we have three bonds, so six bonding electrons that are also being shared um, between oxygen and carbon, and this does give us that plus one formal charge. If you need to pause now, I would do so.
Here we're going to take a look at BF3. This time we do have a true central atom, boron. So that's the only one we're going to look at. And this is going to kind of help us justify why it is boron is truly stable with three pairs of electrons. Boron starts with three valence electrons. It does not have any lone electron pairs assigned to the boron atom, so that's where the zero comes in. It has three bonds between it and each of the fluorine atoms, so that gives us six electrons that are being shared. And the difference between half of 6 and 3 is 0. If we had had BF4 with a pair of electrons sitting on top, we would have seen that this formal charge would have become negative. Um, so again, boron truly is stable with just the three pairs. And finally, we're going to have NO2. I think this is the last one. Here we see that we've got this double bond between oxygen and nitrogen on the left. And we see that we've got a single bond over here between nitrogen and oxygen on the right. This double bond, in theory, can move back and forth between the two. But that's not going to change the number of bonds that we have surrounding the nitrogen atom. And that's what we're going to focus our formal charge on. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. It has two lone electrons being assigned to it. And it has three pairs of electrons that are being shared. So that's six electrons total. And the difference between the five valence electrons and the two lone electrons gives me three. And then half of six would take the other three away, leaving me with a formal charge of zero. If you need to pause now, I would do so. All right. Finally, we're going to take a look at some resonance structures for um, atmospheric pollutants. We're going to take a look at sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. Remember, when you're doing your valence electrons, you want to look at the group in which these elements are found. Sulfur dioxide, and sulfur and oxygen, which is making up both of these, are found in group 16, so they each have six valence electrons. So sulfur dioxide will have 18 electrons to be distributed between the two oxygens and sulfur. Um, so that gives me nine pairs. I start by putting one pair between each of the oxygens and sulfur. That leaves me with seven. Three on one side of the oxygen. I initially would start with three on the other side, and that would leave me with one pair remaining. However, if I leave it like that, sulfur would not have its four pairs, and that's why we see a double bond form between oxygen, or one of the oxygens and sulfur. However, there's no particular reason why the one, um, one oxygen would make a double bond and the other one would not. And so the other resonance structure for sulfur dioxide would show the double bond on the right-hand side of the molecule. With sulfur trioxide, we have 24 valence electrons, so that gives me 12 pairs. So sulfur is going to go in the center, and we're going to connect it with um, one pair of electrons for to each of the oxygen atoms. When we get that done, we've got nine pairs remaining. Three on one oxygen, three on the second oxygen, and initially we started with three on the third. But that would take care of all of our remaining pairs, and sulfur would not have its fourth pair of valence electrons. So we form a double bond between one of the oxygens and sulfur. However, again, well, I just like with sulfur dioxide, there's no particular preference for forming a double bond with the right-hand side oxygen. So it also makes one with the left-hand side one, as well as the one that's facing downwards. Because this bond is distributed between three different um, atoms, it's more like a bond and a third that's being distributed as opposed to a bond and a half that we saw up here with sulfur dioxide. I believe this is the end of this video. So if you haven't gotten everything, you may want to pause it. And then we'll have one last video for this chapter before we finish it up.